to San Diego, California's Qualcomm Stadium for the THQ World Supercross GP, the AMA Supercross Series. This is the 250cc class. Hello, everybody. Todd Harris along with the champ, David Bailey. I'll tell you what, Ricky Carmichael is on a tear. He's got a three-event win streak, David. Not the kind of guy you want to let have that happen. No, he's, when he gets a streak going, he's known to carry it for the entire season. Last year, outdoors, he won every single race. So uh, about the only problem he's had is getting a little champagne in his eye. But... Chad Reed is really keeping him on us. Last week, he put a lot of pressure on Ricky down the stretch. And each time Chad can pull a little time back on Ricky and close the gap, he gets more confident. So Ricky's, yeah, he's comfortable and he's out front with a win streak, but Chad Reed is knocking on the door. Chad Reed finishing only a half a second behind Ricky last week in Anaheim, California. As we check our Honda Series standings, it's Ricky Carmichael, Chad Reed, David Villeman, and Ezra Lusk in a tie. A guy who really was a surprise last week, Michael Byrne. Now, this guy has a lot of talent, but he really held up the big names of the sport for most of the race. I was impressed, you know, and here's a guy that rides the 125 East, not even a full-time 250 rider. I think we can get the idea that when he does move up, he's going to be a real contender. He didn't just get the start and, and get lucky. He actually pulled a gap on a big pack of, of all all the best riders and it wasn't until Ricky finally broke free and put pressure on him that he had any problems at all and Villeman has got to get some kind of an award for passing the most riders this season terrible starts if he can get a start here in San Diego he's dangerous he's won here two out of the last three years let's take a look at our THQ World Supercross GP standings it's all Yamaha still Chad Reed atop the board David Villeman second and Tim Ferry currently sitting in third right now before we go racing let's check in with the hardest working man in the world of Supercross the one and only Cameron Steele right down the road. Rick Johnson comes from there. The guy's a champ. These guys have their favorites and they're not afraid to let you know who they are. They also know the sport. They're going to rev it up. If there's some brake checking or pass blocking, they're going to get into it. I guarantee you that. It's going to be a rowdy night here in San Diego. And I better get out of here before these guys eat me alive. And David, it's now time for the THQ track map. Well, we're back to the traditional start. Everybody's going to be going left this week for the big sweeper, and then I love it. Two whoop sections back to back right off the start. Sends you into a rhythm section under the triple, this on and off plateau section before you work your way through another long rhythm section. Another big triple, a right-hander across the starting line and onto the finish line jump. It's now time for 250 heat number one. Chad Reed. The Thunder from down under, number 22 on board the Yamaha. Kid has got so much talent. I just, I think everyone in America is waiting for him and Ricky to lock up in a 20 lap epic event. Keith Johnson next to him. Well, let's take a look at our Nissan starting grid. There you see the prime players that will be involved here as we have 20 riders going eight laps. The top four get that golden ticket to the main event. Five through 20 will go to semifinal number one. Ernesto Fonseca now living in Canyon Lake, California, on board the Honda, American Honda ride. And uh, Ernesto's had some great starts, originally from Costa Rica, San Jose, Costa Rica, 21 years of age, 5'6", 140. It's one of the smaller riders out there, David, but this guy is loaded with talent as the 30 board is up. Well, Ernesto, we have yet to see a, a great ride from him, what he's capable of. He had a bad crash uh, at Anaheim, another bad one up in San Francisco, and then last week he crashed in the last lap. Still finished up in the top 10, but he's got a lot more under there that he hasn't shown us yet. Number 22, Chad Reed, just to Ernesto's left. 32nd board is sideways. This is heat number one in the 250 class from San Diego, California. Chad Reed in the back of the pack. It's Car oh. Thunder. Paul Carpenter. Chad Reed squirts out of there and gets up into third place. Now in the second, but those big four strokes are tough to beat on the long start. Chad Reed sitting in second, Paul Carpenter in first. Carpenter on board the Honda White Brothers Honda out of Ithaca, New York. Let's look at it one more time. Carpenter just sweeps over from the left. Yeah, he came over from the outside, just laid in on Heath Boss. But he's got Chad Reed all over him right now. Picks a good line, shuts down Chad Reed, who was trying to make a move on the inside, and this is Paul Carpenter's time to shine. Paul Carpenter, the kid out of Ithaca, New York, had a chance to visit with him last week in Anaheim, California, and you know what? He just needs an opportunity, and that's what he's getting right now, David. He's got a lot of talent and a lot of upside. Well, he got a whole shot of the main event up in San Francisco, but he's so nervous up there. Now that he's been in the lead before, 
He's not quite as nervous now, but Chad Reed has got a lot for him. Carpenter gave it to him a little bit in that corner. Didn't want to start anything. He knows Chad is, is capable of getting him eventually. Didn't want to get in there and bang bars just yet. Maybe he could sneak behind him and learn a little bit, pull away from everyone else and get a direct transfer to the main. No question for Paul Carpenter and, and the folks that make him run. It's uh, a great opportunity for him to stay out front. As we mentioned, he's riding board the four-stroke Honda. White Brothers, Honda Shift and Dunlop making it happen for Paul. Good to see him out here. And Chad Reed now is your leader. I'll tell you what, a lot of people think Chad Reed is just due for a victory. Tonight may be the night, but he's got a lot of races still to go. But he's already starting to check out from Carpenter. Well, he's won before. This is the... This is kind of a gimme. You can look at Carpenter. If, if he wanted to, he could have just run Chad Reed up into those excess GP a tough block and said, no, I don't think so. But he was smart right there. Just decided, you know, let's keep this clean, keep the pace fast. When it's early in the race, you don't want to do any blocking and slow the pace because then you kind of shoot yourself in the foot, letting everybody catch back up. Chad Reed turning the fastest lap time at 50.601 here in heat number one, Qualcomm Stadium, San Diego, California. Chad Reed is your leader right now. Paul Carpenter gets the whole shot, holds on for about a lap, a lap and a third until Chad Reed got him through that very tricky whoop session. We'll go to commercial, but we come back to San Diego, California. We'll have the conclusion of heat number one on ESPN. The THQ World Supercross GP in the AMA Supercross Series is being brought to you by Suzuki, maker of innovative motorcycles and all-terrain vehicles. By THQ's MX Superfly, featuring Ricky Carmichael. Now available on the PlayStation 2, Xbox, and GameCube. And by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, personal watercraft, and scooters. You think you can mess with Brock Lesnar? I don't think so. Go ahead and run. I will find you. Backstage, in the parking lot, wherever. Come with numbers. Bring your alliances. It makes no difference. Because in here, it's over. F5, SmackDown, shut your mouth. SmackDown, shut your mouth. Only for PlayStation 2. Rated T for T. to go in this 250 heat number one it is all chad reed paul carpenter got the whole shot but since then it has been chad reed just putting on a show and he is just turning in fast lap times hovering right around 50 seconds even does not look like he's letting up at all and remember the top four battle is on as you, you know, look at the battle for third right there between carpenter and lust seeing carpenter here sandwiched between all these top riders ernesto didn't pass him to check out like i thought he might he's got a little more talent you know, at least he's displayed more talent, you know, in the past couple of years than Carpenter. But, you know, Paul is getting some confidence here, running with all these guys. Yeah, Chad passed him and checked out, but he's in contact with Ernesto still, and each lap he's able to hang with him and keep Lusk back there. It's got to make him feel great. Well, we've talked so much deep this year about the pairing that has been taking place in the 250 class. We've seen victories from David Villeman, of course, Ricky Carmichael, Chad Reed, Ezra Lusk. Do you ever see a day in the near future where a guy like Paul Carpenter sneaks in there and picks him a victory? And if he rides like this, there's a possibility, but he'd have to be a little bit lucky because he had in, Dylan in, and Tim Ferry, who was the fastest in practice this afternoon. Michael Rocco. Yeah. 
and uh, Carmichael, then it gets to be a little bit tougher chore. But being, being on the podium, an absolute the way Paul's riding tonight. Well, Chad Reed continues to be your leader in heat number one here in San Diego, California. And I'll tell you what, Chad Reed has put on an absolute class act show. He's had some difficult times as the white flag comes out. The battle continues on for third and fourth between Carpenter and Lust. But I got to give Chad credit. He has kept his composure and he's stayed classy. And it was interesting walking through the pits today, David. A lot of Australian fans have made the trek to San Diego to see Chad Reed make them proud. Yeah, that's, he's on his white flag lap now. It's a Carpenter still trying to hold off Lust. I'm, I can't believe what I've really stepped it up right here. I think just being in that kind of company has helped with his rhythm and he's feeling good out there and out front chad is he's making australia proud i get a lot of email from my website people saying hey man what is it about these australians that are doing so well of course burn last week right. really having a breakthrough performance anderson's another great up-and-coming rider but chad right here all of his laps have been 50 seconds 50 and a half 50.2 50 50.4 50 as he gets ready to take the checkered flag it's gonna be a fast beat so chad reed wins heat number one here in San Diego, posting the fastest lap in the Battle of Rages on still. Carpenter just trying to get to that finish line and hold off Ezra Lusk. And he just does it. So congratulations to Paul Carpenter, who will advance straight into the main event. I know the folks at uh, Honda, White Brothers, Fox, the ones that keep him running, they'll be happy to see that. Ernesto Fonseca picks up second. Ezra Lusk checks in at fourth position for Heath Boss just on the outside as he gets fifth, so he will have to go to semifinal number one. But you know what's amazing as we look at this, as we look at our Honda official results, Chad Reed gets the victory. Ernesto Fonseca, Paul Carpenter, and Ezra Lusk, and as we mentioned, Heath Boss will have to go to semifinal number one. Right now, let's send it down to the track and our Cameron Steele. All right, I was watching the practice. I saw you looking at a line that, you know, no one else was looking at. It was kind of a triple over and then a triple into the triple. Is it a line that's possible? I, I know you didn't look at it there in the last heat, but is it something you look at in the main? No, I, I couldn't get it in the, in the you know, in the practice. So definitely won't be doing it in the main. You know, I got bruised on my butt because I was trying to seat bounce it so hard. But, hey, you know, I just, everyone's going so fast, like I said. You know, you just got to get that little edge. And, you know, I think uh, Thor and Possum Limited, Yamaha, Scott, Bridgestone, and uh, all the people out here cheering me on. Right on, guys. I just want to point out that could be the true test of a champion. He's the only guy looking at different lines. Something to watch out for. Chad Reed's not scared to try something different. It's time now for Suzuki's On Track. Most doctors have a specialty, whether it's the back, the feet, or the head. But here in Supercross, we have our own doctor. During the week, he specializes in trauma, and on the weekends, he specializes in motocross. <laughs> Castillo and Asterisk and uh, all the AMA and Third Channel all helped and the idea was to get a whole rig that we could take from race to race and uh, drive it coast to coast like the rest of the riders. We can't pattern it after kart racing and they do a similar operation. We'll have an x-ray unit and a full staff of a nurse and a trainer and a therapist so we can uh, take care of just about any of the routine injuries that we'll see that normally we keep them off the track and have to send them to the hospital. We can x-ray them and take care of them right here. Asher's has been the uh, main spearheaded effort behind this. They're the ones who sponsor myself to get to all the races with Dr. Augustine and my other partner who works when I'm not here. And they've uh, put the money together to actually make the rig. So they're responsible for getting the rig going and get it to every race. I, I'm here at every race because of them. I can't thank them enough. <laughs> We are almost set for heat number two in the 250 class. We look at Ricky Carmichael and David, he has had some changes in his camp this week. Well, you see uh, over his right shoulder, Mike Gossler. He's Chris Gossler's father. He's been working at Honda for a long time. More than qualified to fill in for Chad Watts. Mike has uh, been around Honda for a long time and knows exactly what to do in this position. Right, take a look at the THQ starting grid. Carmichael's there, as is Villeman Ferry, Burn, Rancata, Way. I mean, the list goes on and on. This is a really a tough heat. Remember, these guys are going eight laps, and only the top four go to the main. Five through 20 have to go through a very tough semi, too. And if you don't get to that, it's LCQ. It's something you don't want to do. See the rest of the group in there. Casey Lytle had a good showing last week in Anaheim. Marco Dubay, one of the international competitors who has joined us here in Anaheim. So a little bit of time before the 30 board goes up as they check all the riders' final preparations. And uh, got 
There's Michael Burntod, right next to the doghouse, we call it, just to the inside of it. And then you got Brock Sellers right there, number 18 to his left. Brock, a, a great ride last week, finishing second in his heat, leading it for a little while, and then a seventh in the main. So Brock's starting to step up a little bit, build some momentum, because both he and Michael Byrne next to him will be riding 125 East. We'll be seeing them next week in Minneapolis, Minnesota, when the 125 East kicks off. But this is 250, heat number two as the 30 board goes sideways, and we are set to go here in Qualcomm, who will be the next four to advance automatically to the main. Carmichael gets a good jump on the inside. And it's Byrne, Michael Byrne coming in hot. Ricky gets hung up for just a minute, and Byrne is able to go out in front. So it's Michael Byrne getting the whole shot. 21, Stefan Roncata tangling with Ricky Carmichael, but it is Byrne now with about a 15-yard lead. Byrne has been getting out the quick starts. And, you know, this is not the kind of guy who can go, well, you know, we'll get him eventually. Right. No, he is uh, riding with a whole new level of confidence going, you know, I can win these things. These guys aren't that fast. And when you have that kind of thinking, you ride a little bit different. Villeman in fourth rounds out the top four that would directly transfer. Roncada riding much better, building some confidence of his own. So it's Michael Byrne out front. Ricky Carmichael settles in the second. Stefan Roncada in third. And David Villeman in fourth. And I'll tell you what, if it goes down like that, you can't be too surprised because those are four of some of the best Supercross racers in the world right there. Here they go through the whoop. See if Ricky goes in there and pins it. Doesn't make up any ground at all. Villeman closed up a little bit there. Carmichael does a little better on the next section. Through that whoop section, Byrne went down in practice this afternoon, right in front of Carmichael. They both just piled into each other, and the first thing Byrne did was ask Ricky if he was okay and lift the bike off of him. He knew how significant that was to see Carmichael going down and know that it was his fault. Everyone's okay, though. Michael Byrne just holding off Ricky Carmichael. This is a very tricky section. Yesterday in practice, saw Ricky Carmichael go down hard. And I mean, he really went down hard. For those of us watching up here in the booth, as Ricky tries to make a pass, can't get it done on the triple. All right, here comes the pressure. Taking a different line all over Byrne now. And believe me, Byrne can feel it. Now, Ricky's close enough to make something happen in his whoops. Oh, Ricky comes in tight, makes contact with Byrne. Now he pins it in the whoop section. This time, not the position he needed. Michael Byrne gives the young man credit. Here comes Ricky on the inside, gets it done. We'll step aside from San Diego, California. We come back the conclusion of 250, heat number two, plus our Thor Ryder profile when we return. Jerome Bettis and his mom serve Garrett Hill Campbell's Chunky Chicken Noodle. Loaded with more wholesome chicken than before. Filled up right by a great bowl, Garrett went on to bowl great. Steve Blake and the defending champion Terps take on Dante Jones, J.J. Reddick, and the Cameron Crazies. Marilyn and Duke, my friend, this is special. Coverage begins at 7 with Memphis against number 2 Louisville, Wednesday on ESPN. Let's go round the horn, baby. Axes in their form. We'll shut you down. See the way away. That's around the horn. We dares it back. to Showtime, Saturday, February 22nd, on Showtime and In Demand Pay-Per-View. A night of boxing excitement. Order Tyson vs. Etienne on In Demand. Dulles Auto Park announces the grand opening of the biggest Dodge store in the East. Brown Dulles Dodge. The Dodge store of the future with acres of 2003 Dodges. People specially trained to make car buying easy and fun. Technology that solves problems quickly and with less cost. Plus 0% financing. And grand
grand opening savings of over $6,000 on dozens of new Dodges. It's all so easy at the grand opening of Brown, Dulles Dodge, and Chantilly. It's so easy. Welcome back to San Diego, California at Qualcomm Stadium. This is 250 heat number two, and our leader right now, Ricky Carmichael, out in front. Carmichael not getting the whole shot. That honor went to Michael Byrne, and as Mike Gosler looks on, he's got to feel pretty good about what his rider's doing. Now, here comes Villeman. He followed Michael Byrne around quite a bit of the main event last week. It took him a lot longer than he expected to make a move. He was surprised with, you know, the... the the fitness, really, of, of Byrne to be able to run the pace they were running for so long. You know, that most of the 20 laps, Dylan is finally getting around, setting him up, making Byrne think, that's for sure, but he's just, it looks like David's getting frustrated. He, he can go faster than this, but he can't seem to make the pass. Well, it's that corner every time, David. He seems to hook his wheel in that rut. Doesn't get a good run at it. We'll see if he can get it here as they come around to the finish jump one more time. And Michael Byrne, we can't say enough about him. I mean, you got one of the best riders in the world all over your back in David Villeman, and he just can't get around Byrne. This is his chance right here. He tries to keep it clean. He had to go in there for the block pass. But it's too late now. Carmichael's all the way at the end of the straightaway. David's just beginning and time's running down. So what he really wanted to do was, you can see him looking over for Ricky. He wanted to get up there and run with him a little bit, try right. to get another heat win and figure out the pace. We'll take a look at the lap time. The last one by Billman, a 51.8. The last one by Carmichael, a 51.2. Make a good point, Ricky Carmichael has about a six second lead right now. So he's really checking out. He's looking at the pass one more time by David Billman on the right. Uh, you can see his intentions. He went down the right. So in, in case he got a good run at Byrne, he'd be able to just duck underneath there for the block pass, and it worked out okay. As the white flag is out, indicating the final lap here in heat number two for the 250 class from Qualcomm Stadium in San Diego, California. Your leader, Ricky Carmichael. David Bilden runs in second. Michael Byrne, who got the whole shot, sits in third. And Stefan Roncada sits in fourth. Well, Ricky's going fast. You see the 50.8 right there, but not as fast as Reed was going in the first heat. And Reed, all of his laps were fast. So it's, he's sending a message to Ricky here tonight in San Diego saying, yeah, I was close last week. I'm getting faster every week. Beat you in the heat, had a faster one. And that's what you got to do to the champion. Put the pressure on him and force him to ride. Make him beat you. Well, here he comes. Ricky Carmichael crossing the finish line and picking up the heat win. Heat number two makes it look like clockwork. RC just dominates that after a great hole shot by Michael Byrne. It is all Ricky Carmichael with a lead in excess of six seconds over a strong performance by David Villeman, who'll take second. Michael Byrne will get third, and Stefan Roncada will hold on to the final automatic transfer spot to the main event. So we'll take a look at our Suzuki Heat 2 official results. It's Ricky Carmichael, followed by David Villeman, Michael Byrne, Stefan Roncada, and Nicholas Way in the top five. Right now, let's set it down to Cameron Steele. All right, so the champ's on the podium, but I gotta say, in practice, we saw you and Werner come together in the whoops. So were you thinking about that at all when you came up to pass him? Uh, it was in the back of my mind for sure, but uh, there's no hay bales of the race, you know, in, in, on the whoops, so I was way over to the left, and he did mess up. That's how I think I got by him, you know, finally. Uh, he was riding good, you know, he's got a hell of a start. Uh, you know, my Honda's working good, and I just want to go out there and do the best that I can do in the race. All right, let me ask you a hard question for myself. Do you get tired of the media hyping up the battles? Uh, you're the champ. Everybody, we have to build it up. Ricky's yeah. got a race with someone. Do you get tired of it? Uh, I do, but, uh, you know, that's sport, and uh, I'm up for the challenge. You know, uh, I had a pretty easy outdoor season, and, you know, it's good It's good for me. It keeps me motivated, and, uh, you know, I, I feel like I have a lot of experience, and uh, I put in my hard time in this class and fit the dirt plenty of times, and, uh, you know, but I feel like I have what it takes. You know, I, I have all the keys. All right, well, he went hard on the competition. He was a little soft on us journalists. I appreciate Ricky. Back up to you guys upstairs. <laughs> Let's take a break from the racing right now. It is time for our Thor Rider Profile. Red Dog is what his buddies call him. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to call him or not. It's Tim Ferry, the number 15 factor Yamaha. Timmy, I want to ask you, you've been having a good season, good couple of seasons. You used to be a factory rider, then you went privateer, now you're back on the factory. 
Talk about the road between there and, and here. Oh, it was pretty tough. I, mean, I had a couple of years where I wasn't factory, and then I got picked up by Chaparral Yamaha riding from the grass team, and I kind of stayed from there, and now I'm about to ride for Yamaha. Well, your two Yamaha teammates are riding 250s. When you guys are out on the practice track, or even when you're on the super tr cross track, I see a lot of teammates that kind of work together on the track. Are you guys able to do that even though you're riding different motorcycles? And because you guys are so close in the points at the top, do you work together like that? Um, we, no, not really. Not once the race starts. You don't like those guys, is that what you're saying? No, I like them. I just thought uh, I like them after the race is over. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, uh, we don't really play any team tactics right now. You know, maybe later in the season. Uh, we might, but for right now, you know, everybody, it's kind of every man for himself, as I say. <laughs> we had a championship in 1997. Are you feeling like you're back on top of the game where you can get this championship? Or are you at that point? Yeah, I feel like this is this is the best year for me. I mean, I'm further up in the points than I've ever been and uh, started the season off better than I ever have. And uh, this is definitely going to be the year, you know, if I'm going to do it and riding better this year. Well, definitely consistent. I see some of the guys aren't totally consistent. W what's the difference? Supercross seems like it's a little tougher than the outdoors to stay consistent all the time. Is it just the obstacles or the, the type of setup to quick racing? I think the tracks so far have been, have been kind of, you know, a little bit different than what we're used to. The whoops last week were really big, and guys were crashing in those. Oh, Michael Rocco goes down in the worst oh. spot. Oh, oh no. we've got a complete pileup. I don't know. I think the track's a little bit different this year, and uh, everybody's going fast, and everybody's, you know, really pushing it. And when you got guys that are riding on the edge, you know, somebody's going to crash. If you dye your hair black again, we're not going to be able to call you Red Dog much longer. What's up with the black hair dye? He's trying to steal my style, I, yeah, right? Actually, I saw you, and I just trying to copy like you. Right on. Well, he doesn't want to be like me on a dirt bike. He wants a championship. Tim Ferry hanging out. I mean, the guy is super cool. Everybody's looking for him to win, and I, I feel like you're pretty close. Yeah, I think so. This is this should be the weekend. I hope so, and uh, definitely wanting to win. There you hear it. He wants to win. He's ready to go. Last week, round number five, Anaheim 2003 will go down in history. Anaheim is where it all started for Jeremy McGrath. A fitting place to take a farewell lap and make his final Supercross appearance. A sold-out Anaheim crowd was well rewarded as MC threw out the knack-knack one last time. Take this opportunity to join us in person for the THQ World Supercross GP in the AMA Supercross Series. Upcoming dates include February 22nd, Atlanta, Georgia, March 1st, Indianapolis, Indiana, and the RCA Dome, and March 22nd in St. Louis, Missouri. For more information, log on to www.sxgp.com. When we return to San Diego, California, it's the main event. It's Suzuki Best Spring Blast, and now's your chance to get the new Quadrunner ATV you've been waiting for. Right now, you can get up to $350 cash back on ATVs. And on approved credit, use your Suzuki credit card for great financing deals like $25 monthly payments for nine months, or zero down, zero payments, and zero interest for six months. There's also great financing available from 6.95 APR on select Quadrunner ATVs, or 2.95 APR on all Igers and Vincents, as if you needed another reason to ride. The savings won't last long, so blast over to your Suzuki dealer today. Oh man, the trip was beyond expectations. Corey wore that marker on his face for a good four hours, I think. We had to stop like nine or ten times just for Matt. We got up there, it uh, snow dumped on us, fresh powder. So we built this jump, built a nice lip on it for Sam to go off. He didn't know that we built the lip. The girls at the hot tub were awesome, but for some reason, we didn't have much success. I don't know, maybe we'll have better luck next year. The new Honda Element. Go with it. Platoon, Wall Street, Hot Shots. Somebody loves Charlie Sheen. Oh. Can I run a check for these? Can I see some ID? I'm going to have to call the bank. Is this going to take long? Yes. How's it going? This doesn't look like you. You did when I came in here. Next time, use the Visa check card instead of checks. It'll get you in, out, and on with life. How's it going? I'd like you to meet two special athletes. People said they wouldn't amount to squat. Oh, but with the Bud Light ESPN Quarter Bouncers Tournament, even these guys can be champions by competing in a nationwide tournament, finally heading to Las Vegas to become national champions. Watch ESPN's Big Monday. It's traditional for rival networks to steal each other's mascots before a big show. Where are you going? Peacock. Why would I have a peacock? Just kind of raises the stakes a little bit and throws them off their game. 
try starting your little show now. Welcome back to San Diego, California's Qualcomm Stadium for the AMA Supercross Series to THQ World Supercross GP. It's now time to take a look at our Nissan qualifying highlights, the 250 class. Semi-final number one was a mad dash, and Heath Voss was up to the task. Larry Ward, number 10, closed in a couple of times. Couldn't make any thing happen. Finally decided to settle for second as Kelly Smith had the spot and tossed it away in the whoops. In the end, it was Heath Voss picking up the victory in the automatic transfer to the main. In semifinal number two, once again, a lot of men battling, and our own cameraman, Ryan Clark, in the middle of it. He was part of a string of five Yamahas that all transferred out of this. You're looking at Brock Sellers just ahead of you, Tim Ferry, back on the four-stroke, number 15. Was unable to do anything with Ryan Clark. All those guys would still transfer on to the main event. Good to see Tim Ferry back in form and our cameraman getting the job done as well. Nick Way picking up the semi win. And then the LCQ, Clark Styles blasting out of the gate, number 47. But keep an eye on number 81 on the inside, Brian Mason. Chases the jump, does the belly swap on the handlebars, scoots off the track. That would end his night. And remember, only two spots in the LCQ, and one of them went to your winner, Casey Lyle, number 119, back in the main event once again. So those are your Nissan qualifying results as Casey Lytle picks up the victory in the LCQ. As we take a look at the Suzuki main event starting grid, a veritable who's who of talent in the world of Supercross. We've got 10 Yamahas, 8 Hondas, a Kawasaki, Suzuki. Should be a great night, folks. This is it, the main event of the 250 class. And this is the final event we've got on the West Coast. As you look at the rest of the Suzuki starting grid, Ward's in there, Clark Huffman, Ferry, Brock Sellers, Casey Lytle. Right now, let's send it down to the track and Cameron Steele. Well, guys, we're racking them up for the 250cc main event, and I'm checking out this obstacle here. It's a berm shot as they head into the finish line. It's kind of stuttered, too, but it's also the step jump in the start line. It's the longest start straight we've had so far this year. It's 100 yards to that first corner. All right, great report, Cameron. I think uh, a lot of people would like to see Ezra Lusk, Chad Reed, and Ricky Carmichael have a little bit of a battle, maybe a little mix and a little David Villeman in there. Tonight's attendance, though, 67,100 turning out here in Qualcomm for this fantastic show. Great look at the far inside Lusk, then Carmichael, then Villeman, then Ferry. Ferry expect on that 450 to, to get a much better start than he did in his heat and his semi. I think this is going to be the time where Ferry gets it all together, but we still got to outrun this kid for three, or three wins in a row, looking for number four. The 32nd board is sideways, and we are off in San Diego, California. Who will get the SXGP.com hole shot? Villeman's up there. And look at that, number 32, Michael Byrne, first to the line, but Villeman on the outside coming in, trying to find a way to take away his lead. Villeman will hold off on the outside. It's Chad Reed coming around. And the two Yamahas come together, and Villeman comes out in front. This is what David's been needing. It's a great start. Looks over his shoulder to make sure it's He's clear with his teammate, Chad Reed. These guys ride like this all during the week. Being teammates, they're very used to each other's uh, tendencies and line choice and speed. Chad's going to push David, but David may be up for the challenge. Oh, my. Let the dinner burn, mother, because we've got a great race going here. Look at that. The sandwich the burn was in. A blue corner for him, Reed around the outside. A very smart ride around the outside, not to get clipped by Villeman, who came from the inside and almost touched. And Carmichael's now moved up to third ahead of Burns, so it's the two Yamahas of Villeman and Reed. Chad Reed now starting to make a run on Villeman. Comes up a little short in that rhythm section, and Ricky Carmichael's now flying up the back. So it goes Villeman, Reed, and Carmichael. One, two, and three. Set your VCR. This could be a classic. Well, the, the pace that Villeman and Reed are running right now, I don't know, Ricky's going to have to ride so hard to catch these guys. And that's what you want to do. You want to force the champion to, to take chances and ride on the edge. And, you know, that usually promotes a, a mistake here and there, and these guys can break free. 
David Villeman won here in 2002 and 2000, so San Diego has been very, very good to the Flying Frenchman. David Villeman, number 12, on board the Yamaha. And once again, Chad Reed makes another great run to the whoop section. Can he duplicate that? He's not able to come back as fast, and his teammate stays out in front. Here he comes again. Has he figured this rhythm section out? He has. The Thunder from down under gets past the Cobra, so it's now Reed in first, Philbin second, and here comes the hard-charging Ricky Carmichael. David was feeling a lot of pressure right there, and it looked like a fairly easy pass in the same exact corner where Reed had a run on him before. I don't know that David's happy about losing a position, but he can learn a lot right now from Chad, who's got a couple of places on the track where he's a bit more aggressive. And right there, it was just aggressiveness that gave him the lead right there. Villeman decides, all right, well, I'll follow you around and see what you're doing. If he can stay close to him, it'll be great, but he's starting to lose a little ground. Here comes Carmichael. This is the 250 main, 20 riders going 20 Whoa. laps. Chad almost losing the front end and going down. I talked about these guys riding on the edge. Chad is pushing it as hard as it can be pushed. Well, I think Chad Reed knows by unfortunately experience that Ricky Carmichael is like a rabbit pig. Not going to give up until he gets that suit bone. The suit bone being first place. And Villeman now in danger of losing that second place position. Chad Reed turning the last lap fastest lap time of 50.5. So Chad Reed on the gas. And I'll tell you what, David, this is what people have been wanting to see in this class. And look at that. Carmichael gets past Villeman in a very interesting position. I don't think David Villeman knew he was that close. No, he didn't. He tripled down that rhythm section and figured, well, that's the fastest way. But Ricky was just a touch more aggressive. That's the only thing holding David back right now is these guys are just hanging it out. Another couple percent. And now oh, Carmichael goes down. Ricky Carmichael goes over the bars. The enders comes out of that whoop section. Villeman gets by him, so Carmichael drops. He will now go in about sixth place. Byrne gets by him. Ferry gets by him. Way gets by him. Here comes two more. Oh, Fonseca. Ernesto Fonseca just drops. Chad Reed maintains his lead, and unfortunately for race fans who are expecting to see this battle continue for 20 laps, he is checked out. Fonseca now back up and riding, as is Ricky Carmichael. So a lot of action in this corner of the track. Everyone's starting to push it now. Well, I talked about having to put some pressure on Carmichael. And that's what Reed was doing. He was checking out. And Ricky knew that he had to get around Villeman and try to stay with Reed. Reed is just riding unbelievable tonight. He's, he's, he's so aggressive. Villeman is, is looking smooth and as good as he's looked, but Reed, it, I, just, I don't know, man. He just had like a pot of coffee before the main event. He's out there <laughs> running on caffeine or something because he's he's just attacking the racetrack and he's got a great lead now over his teammate and he's going to gain some points on Carmichael right now. That's what he needs. He wants to inch back up and take over the points lead. Well, Ricky Carmichael certainly now has got to keep his mind on getting back onto the podium after that horrific fall. You know, that's the second, third fall, actually, he's had in the last two days here. He had a really bad fall Friday in practice, and then today in practice he went down hard, and now in the main event, a very unopportune time for him to do that. Ricky now back on the gas. Number four, the defending champion, is up and riding. Certainly now going to try to put some distance between himself and the rest of the field and try to get the within distance of Chad Reed and David Villeman. We'll step aside from San Diego's Qualcomm Stadium when we come back more of the 250 main here on ESPN. Thanks, it feels good. The bike is working awesome tonight. It feels good to uh, get another victory. Big freaking deal! Check this out! Was it you, Carmichael?
KFC is something unique and exciting. Hot wings. They're crispy with a sizzling blast of spicy flavor that'll turn up the heat at any shindig. Hot and crispy outside, tender inside. Hot wings only from KFC. For limited time, get eight for only $2.99 or 20 for just $7.49. Mm -hmm. I smell hot wings. <laughs> well, that's breaking the ice at parties. Steve Blake and the defending champion Terps take on Dante Jones, J.J. Reddick, and the Cameron Crazies. Marilyn and Duke, my friends, this is special. Coverage begins at 7 with Memphis against number 2 Louisville, Wednesday on ESPN. From Kid Dynamite. He came in to destroy you. And you know it. To Ticking Time Bomb. You hear that? Two million in my world. You're scared, Cal. I'm Mike Tyson. Sports Century, 8 p.m. Friday on ESPN Classic. Welcome back to San Diego, California, as the 250 main is in progress. Ferry and Byrne right now battling for fourth. Tim Ferry, number 15, on board the Yamaha, holding up the trio of Yamaha riders at the front of the pack. Michael Byrne out of Australia trying to get back into that running. Now, Byrne is, is unbelievable. The guy's getting out to great starts. And uh, Nick Way behind her and running a solid race. And here comes Ricky Carmichael. So Carmichael right now sitting in sixth place with Nick Way in his crosshairs right now. And Ricky, you can see, he's just got the determination. He's going to pick off one at a time, but he's got a tall order ahead of him. I mean, Nick Way, no easy pass. And he's got to get past Byrne again, and that just gets him to fourth. Yeah, for Ricky to make the podium tonight, he's got to get by, get all the way up to Tim Ferry. There's time. Yeah, he's coming up quick on Way right here. He might pull it off. Thing to consider, too, about what Ricky's dealing with right now is the sides that probably didn't feel too good to fall. Look how much lower he stays in Nick Way. Sets him up perfect for a pass. But Ricky, you know, besides something may be hurting him right now, but Ricky's some theory on that is he ain't got time to bleed. He's just out there riding. May have a bent lever. Yep. You know, when the bike takes a tumble like that, you've got to get adjusted to it. And he's starting to find his speed again. Watch this. He dives back to the inside. He's so close to clipping the rear wheel of Nick Way to dive in there like that. But what set that up was the fact that Ricky stayed about three feet lower off the big triple. Right now, let's set it down to Cameron Steele, who is standing by with Mike Gosler, Ricky Carmichael's new mechanic for this week. You're excited about it here. I know that Ricky has had some problems earlier in the event or earlier in the day with the whoops. Has he been uncomfortable at all? No, not really. I mean, you know, we're just trying to get the bike set up right. It seemed like we hit it pretty good in the, the heat race, but I don't know what happened back there. I couldn't really see it from down here. I don't know if he lost in a turn or coming out of the whoops or what. There's enough time for us in the race for him to come up through the back a little ways. Now well, we'll see how it goes. That's Cameron Steele dropping the information on us. Well, this is the 250 main, and we have seen a great race thus far. About halfway through, your leader, Chad Reed, number 22, on board the Yamaha. Looked very good from the start. Had a nice battle with his teammate, David Villeman. Ricky Carmichael starting to threat. Carmichael goes down, and now it is Chad Reed, who is all but checked out here in the main. We saw him Anaheim won, David, and he said earlier, that's the way he needs to get back to riding. Yeah, he, he said uh, he wanted to bring back some of the intensity that he had at Anaheim. And, you know, when you're 100% physically, you can go out there and just attack the racetrack. That's what Carmichael was doing as well. But obviously, both these guys were on the edge. Now that Reed has this kind of a lead, he's dialed that intensity back to where he's turning 52 second lap times instead of the 50s that he was turning earlier. Chad Reed, nine seconds right now over Villeman. So in this kind of race, nine seconds is an all but an eternity. Ricky Carmichael back in the pack doing battle with a teammate in Michael Byrne. Both of those men on board a Honda. But tonight has been a night the folks at Yamaha have to have a big smile on their faces. They are going one, two, and three with Reed, Villeman, and Ferry. When we return to San Diego, the final laps of the 250 main here on ESPN. Right. Champions ride Hondas. Now and in the future. The Honda 
XRs. They're a head start. Smoking marijuana impairs your judgment. It's more harmful than we all thought. Beth from Akron asks, what do pro bowlers do with all that prize money? I got it. You sure? Yeah, I got this one. Okay. Flo. Do you take checks? Get to know them. The VIA Bowling Open, Sunday, 12.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Planning on doing some shopping? Did you schedule that doctor's appointment? Need a ride from work? Wherever you need to go in Loudoun, you can count on Loudoun Transit to get you there. Some of the best shopping and health care in the county is only a bus ride away with Loudoun Transit's fixed routes and schedules. Or simply call and get a ride right from your doorstep. The entire family will love the ease and convenience of this door-to-door -door service. Loudoun Transit. Reliable, safe, on-time transportation to just about anywhere. Welcome back to San Diego's Qualcomm Stadium in beautiful Southern California on a very chilly night. Well, Chad Reed has certainly heated things up as we are coming down to the final few laps. Chad Reed is all but checked out. Well, we got our first glimpse of what Chad Reed had in store for the 250 class when he went over to Europe with the Yamaha boys and uh, picked up a victory over there, over in Arnhem. His teammate David Villeman picked up a victory at the first stop in Geneva. So. Chad Reed, really no surprise. We knew what he could do in 125, and he just translated that into 250. The kid is aggressive, he's talented, and he makes no apologies for the way he rides, which is all out. I don't think he ever intends to do any harm. He is just a hard-charging rider, and more power to him. Chad just running a beautiful race. The lap before, he was behind Ezra Lust, putting him a lap down. Lust looking aggressive in the practice this afternoon, but running clear back in 11th right now. Chad Reed's last lap time was a 52.47, so he has fallen off by almost two seconds, but as David pointed out, folks, he's got about a 20-second lead over Ricky Carmichael, who he's chasing in the points battle, and a 10-second lead over his teammate David Villam in the Cobra, who sits in second right now. Well, the crowd got to see some exciting stuff at the beginning, but it all settled down, and now it's between the top three, it's all pretty spread out. And I think Chad Reed has answered the question, of can he beat Carmichael again? Yeah, no the question. Answer is yes. No question. Of course, Ricky fell, you know, and we're never going to know for sure what would have happened there, but pretty impressed with the way Chad's riding and, and his attitude. You know, I see him cruising around the pits. He just he looks like he's never uptight. You know, that's the, the same way that McGrath looked all those years he dominated. He just... Everything was just so nonchalant and so much fun. And when you, you know, just think about that. You know, if you got to go, you can hold a conversation in a group of people. <laughs> and then when it's you got to go up and talk in front of a room full of a thousand people, you clam up, get nervous. <laughs> you don't even know what you're doing. So when you get nervous out here, it's really tough to ride well. And Chad is able to shake off the nerves and ride to his potential nice and relaxed. This is David Villeman, number 12, now living in Corona, California, originally from France, on board the Yamaha Motorcore USA Bridgestone Yamaha. David Villeman picked up the first victory of the year when we were over in Europe, Geneva, Switzerland. And uh, after a series of minor little injuries and things like that, he's fought himself back. Podium last week, sitting in second right now. Chad Reed out in front. And uh, I guess. For David, if you got to lose, it's got to be to a teammate, but it's not really a moral victory for him. He, he'd like to be in first on the podium. And the same for Ricky Carmichael. The fact that he fell and he was in sixth and battled back to third is great. And he'll 
a lot of people will pat him on the back, say, hey, Ricky, you know, this and that. But third place for Ricky Carmichael, that's, that's no good. That's like someone serving you eggplant when you could have dessert. <laughs> Yeah. David just picked up a second on Carmichael that last lap, so I'm uh, thinking that Carmichael might just go ballistic and try to reel David in and, and uh, keep him from building any confidence. But a couple of thirds in the past two races and now a second. David's doing what he needs to do to, to build some steam. Chad's obviously doing what he needs to do. And Ricky's turning a potentially crummy night into right. something that's right. not so bad. He's only going to lose five points the way it sits right now to Reed. He'll still be the points leader. This kid is just tough as a 10-year-old leather boot. I'm telling you, we've seen him go down so many times this weekend in San Diego, take hard hits, and I think would put any other rider walking off the track saying, that's it, I'm done for the night. And Ricky just, you know, you said, he doesn't have time to hurt. He'll, he'll hurt later. Yeah, he's, look at him looking over, going, okay, where's the next guy? Billman, uh, he's still way over there. Uh, the last lap, Billiman at a 53.8, Ricky at 53.2, a little bit of time back up, but they've been just kind of going back and forth. They, they all know that that's pretty much where they're going to finish now with a few laps to go. Well, if you were with us for the first five or six laps, it was a veritable cornucopia of joy as the best riders in the world did battle. And with just two laps to go, Chad Reed is all but checked out. Could stop and make a phone call back to Australia and still have time to win this race. Chad Reed way out in front by almost 20 seconds over Carmichael as the white flag is left. White flag is out for him. And it's gonna be quite a while until David Villeman comes through and gets the white flag. So you'll see just how far he has of a lead. And we'll see if Chad gives the folks here a little bit of a show because the folks in San Diego love this Australian. Uh, last I looked, it's about a 15 second lead. Villeman gets the white flag. Chad's celebrating. Well deserved. And his teammate Villeman finishing in front of Ricky really helps Chad. Yeah, that causes Ricky to lose a few more points with David Villeman in second on the podium if everything goes as according to plan. And Chad Reed coming down the back stretch. The flashes are going off, waving to the fans. I'll tell you what. Coming to this event, he just showed me something in practice. He just looked like he was due for a victory. I'm not saying that Todd Harris crystal ball was working overtime, but Chad Reed deserves the win and gets it. Your 250 winner in San Diego, the Thunder from down under, number 22, Chad Reed on board the Yamaha, picks up the win. Congratulations to Chad, a great ride. So aggressive in the beginning to set up for the big lead and a, one more step up on the podium for Villeman. David and Villeman checks in with second. Great rebound for Carmichael to no go question. down hard like that and fight back. The resolve of this kid is still unmatched. Well, for three weeks in a row, we were treated to Ricky Carmichael whips as he came across the finish line. Now we get the foreign version. Chad Reed picks up the win. I'm sure Ricky Carmichael will be the first guy back to the truck checking tape to find out what exactly went wrong in that corner. When we return to San Diego, we'll wrap things up. We'll have official results and interviews with our top finishers right after this. Everybody's riding and training together. And it's such a great sport, and it's good to do it on a Suzuki. The first Suzuki I had was a JR80. And man, ever since, I've been hooked to the brand. Just trying to have fun with it at first, and uh, if you like it that much, just keep working at it, and eventually you'll get up here. The DRZ line's so awesome. Just like my bike, it's so fast, so easy to get used to. Such a variety to pick from. The whole family can go and get something they love. Suzuki definitely has the right dirt bike for you. The good old to-do list. Everybody's got one. Well, this weekend, the Home Depot is here to help. With the President's Day event, find everything you need to make your home better. We're making painting even easier. With free paint clinics, learn faux paint techniques. And get great brand name paints like Ralph Lauren, Glidden Evermore, with a special buy on bare paints and stains. $3 off all one gallon cans. Get everything you need to get things done. The President's Day event this weekend only at the Home Depot.
Pittsburgh Steeler Jerome Bettis and his mom serve Garrett Hill Campbell's Chunky Chicken Noodle, loaded with more wholesome chicken than before. Filled up right by a great bowl, Garrett went on to bowl great. Let's go round the horn, baby. Max is in rare form. He'll shut you down. See you later, way. That's around the horn. We days at five. The AMA Supercross Series and THQ World Supercross GP has been brought to you by Suzuki, maker of innovative motorcycles and all-terrain vehicles by THQ World Supercross GP. Get tickets at sxgp.com. By Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, personal watercraft, and scooters. And we welcome you back once again to San Diego's Qualcomm Stadium. The 250 main goes into the history books, and what a great race it was. As we take a look at our Honda final results, Chad Reed is your winner, followed by David Villeman. Ricky Carmichael gets third, Michael Byrne in fourth, and Nick Way rounding out the top five. Right now, let's send it down to Cameron Steele. All right, guys, your champ, Chad Reed, all the way from Australia's third win on the season. Chad, it's been a bit since Anaheim won, since we've seen you on the very top of the podium. Has there been some changes to get you back up here? Cameron, just uh, just working on my stats, and uh, man, I'm so pumped. You know, You're excited, it, I can tell. You know, there's been so much talking, you know, in the, between me and Ricky, and you know, the two of us, you know, that we have nothing against each other, but you know, we want to win, and you know we're the only two that want to win really, really bad. And you know that we're competitive, and you know we, I say something, he says something. And, you know the ball keeps rolling, and it's going to be an interesting season. You know I, I really was out here to just try and get those logs off the fire, you know, before they start burning too much. And you know I want to thank a lot of people, you know, the guys at Yamaha, Thor, Parts Unlimited, Scott, Bridgestone crowd here in San Diego. Everything just uh, really flowed. It was a lot of fun. Right on. Congratulations. We'll see you at Minneapolis. You guys, a heck of a ride from Chad Reed. All right. Thank you, Cameron. We'll take a look at our Honda Series standings, and Ricky Carmichael's lead has been decreased by Chad Reed, who picks up the victory tonight. It'll be interesting to see what those standings look like when we get to Las Vegas later this year. Let's go back down to the track. Cameron Steele with a very happy David Villeman. A solid performance from the Cobra. David Villeman, David, second place tonight. I want to ask you, it's been since Arnhem at our second round that we saw you on the second spot, first spot at the first round. What have you been doing differently, and, and is there something you changed to get back up on top here in the second spot? Nothing. I uh, just feel and, uh, and everything, but, you know, I was uh, really tired during, uh, going uh, in the first round, and, uh, you know, it cost me some good, uh, good uh, places. But, you know, I came back, and uh, I'm happy with uh, those uh, three podiums, you know, three podiums in a row is really good and uh, now we're going to go back east I, I look forward to that and uh, you know I'm third in the point so now I just need to, to catch those two guys and uh, you know it's gonna I'm gonna need a lot of uh, speed and fitness as I'm gonna work on that now you point out you're not out of this points battle it's still anybody's race yeah you know that's uh, I'm gonna give 100% and now uh, you know this week I flew back to France and I didn't ride I'm kind of tired so I think I need to rest up for next week and that'd be good thank you David yeah thanks so all right, thank you, Cameron. Quickly, we'll take a look at our THQ World Supercross GP standings. So on behalf of my colleagues, Jamie Little, Cameron Steele, and the champ, David Bailey, I'm Todd Harris saying good night from San Diego, California's Qualcomm Stadium. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Good night, everybody. In recognition of Black History Month, ESPN salutes African-American athletes who have impacted the world of sports. He began on the blacktops of Nacogdoches, Louisiana, and ended up playing in a palace. Freezes short, spins inside. the kid could play. 14 years of scoring, defending, and winning two NBA titles in Detroit proved that. 
And now from the front office, he continues to lead by example. From role player to role model. From the good Joe of the bad boys to president of the Pistons. The journey of Joe Dumars is a profile in humility, humanity, and hard work. Proof that nice guys can and do finish first. Hi again, everyone. I'm Stuart Scott. You know, the question is often asked, what's in a name? Well, some names come to symbolize qualities we value and are attached to the highest honors attainable in every field, including sports. The football team that overcomes all obstacles to win the Super Bowl is awarded the Vince Lombardi Trophy. The Red Auerbach Trophy is given annually to the NBA's Coach of the Year. And the NBA player who receives the league's Sportsmanship Award is handed the Joe Dumars Trophy. So named because Joe Dumars epitomized class, dignity, and yes, sportsmanship throughout his career. As the quiet, stabilizing force on the bad boys Detroit teams of the 80s, Dumars earned the respect and admiration.